Good morning, Modern Steaders. Good morning. It is a nice, brisk 23 degrees out this morning. It's this 23 is out. 23. The coldest morning so far. We were hoping to be back up at the off-grid property this morning, finishing putting up the solar panels. Well, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. One is a bad reason. I hurt my back. It's doing better. That's the bad reason. But the good news is, is Ken's going to be up there today, and we're going to be working on putting up some walls on the tiny house. This is exciting. It's very exciting. It's going to start to look so different up at the off-grid property. No chickens yet. They must still be sleeping because it's so dark. Yeah, it is dark. Good morning. Oh, you heard me talking about you. Good morning, girls. You hear me talking about you? Fluffy girl. You fluffy girl. Good morning, chickens. You coming? Where's everybody else? Huh? Oh, here they come. Mr. Rooster, you gotta be nice to your ladies. You're slacking this morning. Did you have a long night last night or what? Boys are snoozing this morning too. Is it too cold for you this morning, boys? Come on. Good morning, Camo. Little man. Your haze over here, dude. You ladies waiting for your sunflower seeds? Good morning, girls. Where's Daisy hiding? Come on, Miss Daisy. Good morning. If you watch Ken's channel, he was talking the other day how I got a new tool for the build. I did, but I didn't get the tool for me. I got it for Ken. When me and Ken were talking, he was talking about this new tool he would like to get. It helps lift walls. It's called Wall Lift. I'm gonna leave a link in the video description down below to it. Video is not sponsored. But Ken was telling me about these lifts. He was saying one of the houses they just did, they lift up the top gable end walls and they were heavy. And yeah, they, could have, they could have had some issues, but they didn't. And our walls are gonna be even bigger. So he was talking about these lifts. So I reached out to the company and I told them what we were doing, told them the project we were working on, and they sent me two of them. So thank you, Wall Lift. Like I said, everything's gonna be linked down below. But Ken doesn't know I got them for him. We got were able to get these because of our community. So thank you guys. If it wasn't for all of you, we wouldn't have been able to get Wall Lift to send these to us. I'm only gonna use them every once in a while. Ken can use them a lot more. And next time I need the wall lift, I'm just gonna call up Ken and see if I can borrow them. So we're gonna load them in the truck and we're gonna surprise Ken with them today. They're all still in boxes. Ken's gonna have to Ken's gonna have to do some assembling. So you'll have to keep watching the videos to see how they work. But from what I saw online, they're gonna be a big help building. All right, I'll meet you guys up at the off-grid property. 
We're up here at the off-grid property. We're waiting on Ken. He's en route. And we're going to start standing up some walls today for the tiny house. Pretty yeah, exciting. This is so exciting. I've been waiting to see walls. It's going to look so different. I don't know how many walls we're standing up or which walls, 100%, but we're going to get some standing up by the end of the video today. And that's going to be a big change. Big change. Yeah. One we've been waiting for and waiting for. Yep. Once the walls are up, it just goes fast. Yeah. We're not going to get all the walls up today, but we're going to get a few up. It's late in the afternoon, so we had a couple of walls built, so we wanted to come up and get them stood up. So. It's going to be even faster because they're already built. They're, are, they're already built. Ken's been building a lot of the stuff at his shop. If you guys don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about Ken from Ken's Carpentry. He has a YouTube channel. It'll be linked in the video description down below. We're going to be collabing with him on framing up the tiny house. He does a lot of the building of the walls at his shop. And then he brings them over here and you'll see what we're going to be doing when he shows up because I can't say 100% yet because we haven't done it. So the reason he does a lot of the prep work at his shop is he can do it there and he has all of his tools laid out. If it rains, it's the weather's not affecting him and you can just be a lot more, you can be a lot faster and more efficient doing it that way. Here he comes with the first load of walls. No pressure, Ken. You just gotta back up straight.
Ted knows that I got a new tool, but he doesn't know it yet that I got it for him. What? These wall lifts are for you. I reached, I reached out to walllift.com, and these are for you. We're going to use them on our project, but you're taking them home. Are you serious? I'm serious. What? Yeah. Wow. Wow. I'm not going to hug you, but are you kidding me? No. Those, those are sweet. So. Wow. Thank you. We'll nice. have to go over them in the videos and show how they work. And yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that, but these are for you. Oh, man. Hey, goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> That's been something... Uh, Every job we do where we tip up a big wall, it's like, is it going to blow over? Right. You know? The only or, reason why I know about them is because of you. You mentioned them. So oh, I went yeah. on, checked them out, and reached out to the company, and they sent them to us. Wow. Wow. So. Wow. We'll do a demo of that. Definitely. Nice. Can you believe we already got some walls up? It's so awesome. Right? Well, you hold up back and start doing it. It sure does. We're going to be putting another wall where these red lines are. This is going to be a load bearing wall. So we have a, another footing under it. And in a couple of spots, we have our hex tubing for our radiant heat going. So I want to mark out where our radiant heat is going to be going. So that way we're not drilling through and putting our anchor bolts into our hose. We have the measurements. So 18. We don't want one from here to there, and then eight feet to nine feet. Don't step on my phone. And then 140 inches to 155 inches. This gives us some wiggle room. The pipes are running at angles through back to the manifold. So we want to make sure in here we do not get any anchor bolts. This is a really a doorway now. It is. It's so cool. Right. And I wasn't expecting to have the, what is that called? The zip system sheathing up. The sheathing up. I was just expecting to have, I guess, it's right here. It's so cool to see a window. Right. And a doorway. In a couple days, it's going to have more walls. It will. I think in the next video, all the walls will be up. And I don't know how much further we'll get. I don't know if we'll all get sheets in that day or not, but it's going to be going quick. Ken's got to go back to his shop, finish building the walls, and then he'll bring them over here, and then we'll stand them up. This is a Friday for us, so we'll be making probably a one more video in between Ken showing up because we have some more stuff we need to get done. And then Ken will be back after that because it's over the weekend, and we'll get the wall stood up. So it's going to be exciting to see what it looks like. There's going to be a lot of progress being made in a short amount of time. And we've just seen it on grid paper. So like to see it on that and then try to like cause with the grid paper, you can see kind of where everything can fit and all that. And just like real life, it just makes it so much different. And I know this might not seem like a tiny house, but it's tiny for us, right? Right. And, and a lot of the house isn't living quarters. Like this whole room right in this area, right. this is all for solar. Right. Downstairs isn't too much the tiny part. It's the upstairs bedrooms. The upstairs isn't going over the whole building because if we would have done that, it would have cost a lot more money. We would have had to have roof trusses made. So the way we're building it makes this building more affordable because we're not going to be living in this house forever. Later on, this will be coming a, our butcher shop, our harvest house, whatever you would like to call it. Canning preserving area. Right. Yep. So, and then we are, we're always going to need an area for our solar systems and it has to be heated. So that's why we're making this building the way we're making it and we can live in it temporary and it's going to be an awesome living quarters. That way we can get up here quicker and start building the rest of our homestead. And then we'll, and then we'll already have our outdoor kitchen already done because we built it. We'll have some storage areas. We'll have just so many things checked off our box with this building. So it's really awesome. 
We'll miss my basement. <laughs> yes. It's the next day. We're back up at the tiny house build site and we have the delivery of the outdoor boiler coming anytime now. I need to get the TYM tractor warmed up. It was a cold night overnight. So we're gonna wanna get her running and warming up before we need it. We're gonna be using the TYM tractor with our pallet forks on it to unload this furnace. Oh, I shouldn't say that, to unload this outdoor boiler. I'm not exactly sure how big it is. I haven't seen it in person yet, but I know it's big. Yes, I haven't seen it in person. I did all of my research online. I found the best outdoor boiler that I could find, and I found the best one for the price. It's a clean burning outdoor boiler. And I don't know if you know guys, but I don't like leaving the homestead very often. I am, I don't know what you would call that, a hermit? I like to stay on our properties. Yeah, I just needed to warm up. the outdoor boiler was supposed to be here a couple of days ago and with logistics of everything it got pushed off so I had planned being able to just take the tractor back in this way and just come over and set it in place well somebody started building a tiny house and now we have walls of our tiny house <laughs> the way I had was like, thinking about putting the tractor so we'll have to wait to see when the outdoor boiler gets here how we're gonna get this in position because we got the tiny house and we have a work trailer so things are always changing you try to plan stuff ahead and get everything laid out okay we'll have this come this day and everything will work nice and smooth and then hiccups get thrown in there stuff doesn't arrive when it's supposed to especially this year uh, we were just looking and our windows and doors should have been here yesterday well we just found out our windows aren't gonna be here for another month. And the door, the garage door, was supposed to be there and they don't know where it is. <laughs> so uh, we ordered all this stuff back at the end of August. So it's kind of crazy to think how long it's gonna take for a lot of the stuff to come in considering we already ordered it months ago. So if you guys are doing any building, just remember. It's gonna take a while to get your stuff. Well, that's one thing with doing any kind of building, you always need to learn how to adapt and overcome because you're always gonna get monkey wrenches thrown in on your project. So always have a couple of plans. And if they don't go to plan, come up with another plan and make it work. I guess that's the best advice I can give you if you're building or doing anything is make sure you're not stuck in your ways and that you're open-minded so when something doesn't go your way, you can change and change your mind quickly or your mindset quickly to be able to adapt and overcome like our solar panels i wanted to have the solar panels up already and that didn't work look at the tiny house going there's the boiler all right we have to take off a few other things off the trailer first before we can get the boiler off we were able to pick up a nice big stainless steel drum off of them which we'll use for harvesting in the future
plan B. Well, that didn't go quite as I had planned in my head. I planned on using the TYM tractor to take it off the trailer, but the TYM tractor didn't lift high enough to lift it up and off. So that's why we had to get in the Bobcat. So we got it in place, we got it set, it looks good. We ended up going with a Heatmaster G10,000. This outdoor boiler will heat over 10,000 square feet. And that's why we got it to heat all the buildings we're gonna have here in the future. So right now it's definitely oversized for the tiny house, but when we have our house here, and the tiny house is our butcher shop and our greenhouse, and we have a workshop and other things hooked up to it, we're gonna be able to heat everything off of the outdoor boiler. And we will, won't be keeping the outdoor boiler here forever. This winter, this is where we're gonna keep it because it's gonna be easily accessed. So when we need to fill it with firewood, it's right here, we don't have to trek way up into the woods. But later on I wanna set it up further and I wanna have a 
wood shed around it so we can store all of our firewood and have a nice area to get to feed it and everything. But I don't want to do that yet until we have more of the layout and the homestead figured out so we have it in the right spot. So this is a temporary location for it, but it's a perfect spot for it, in my opinion, for right now. Not far from the tiny house, right off the driveway, easily accessed, so I am happy. The dealer we got our outdoor boiler from is Peter Smith. I'm gonna put his information down below and I'm also gonna link Heatmaster's website if you guys wanna check them out. I'll go into more detail when we hook up the Heatmaster outdoor boiler. The biggest reason we got this outdoor boiler is because from all of my research, this is the most efficient one. I really like the looks of it. It's really efficient. This outdoor boiler is 88% efficient. It passes the EPA regulations and right now there's a 26% tax credit on these outdoor boilers. So that's pretty exciting. And not also a 26% tax credit on the outdoor boiler, but there's also a 26% tax credit on whatever it takes to hook up the boiler. I'm excited to have this dropped off because now we can hook it up when we need it. And one more piece of the infrastructure for the off-grid property. I had to take the bucket off the Bobcat so that way we'd have a place to hook the chain. We got quite a few walls up at the tiny house the other day and that was only an hour and a half worth of work. I can't wait to see how much we get done when we have a full day up there with Ken and his crew. It is going good. It feels good to have the outdoor boiler dropped off. That's one more piece of infrastructure up at the off-grid property. We're trying to get all this big stuff dropped off and done and in before winter sets in. We have been very lucky this year. We usually have snow by, we usually have snow by now. There, that's better. It's been a long day, guys. Uh, but we haven't had any. So winter is holding off, which has been really helpful for us with everything we're trying to get done. So I can't wait till the next video to show you guys what we've been working on. So thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey. We hit 300,000 subscribers the other day. Thank you guys for that. That is just mind blowing. If you're already subscribed to the channel, thank you. If you're not, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for coming along on the journey. I'll see you guys right back here in the next video. Bye.